This component here is a rotor or the rotating part of an electric motor which in this case was featured in another video of mine as part of a treadmill. You see the owner threw away the entire treadmill, replacement cost thousands of dollars on account of these two squealy worn bearings because they just wear over time no matter what. Replacement cost for bearings for the two of them combined including tax $13. This is the bearing designation number and I went for the top of the line premium brand. The motor, the bearings, the rotor comes out from a Leeson branded motor which is designed to be highly serviceable. The designers had in mind that these bearings will wear over time and are meant to be removed and replaced like this. Because these are small bearings I have already removed them from the motor shaft, they don't just pop off like this. Very simple mechanical means are used for installation and removal as well. So in this video I'm going to show you and explain how they were removed and how they are being installed. Let's take a look at the motor shaft design at both ends of this motor shaft. Let me just pull off the bearings. So, the motor shaft has three steps on it, or three shoulders. Two of them are very small. The first shoulder, uh, let me just focus the camera here, the first shoulder is here, and my nail is catching on it. The second shoulder is here, there, and the third one is here. The bearings in a ring will stop at this third shoulder, that's when the bearing will be in place there. The bearing fits very loosely up until this first shoulder and gets stuck here at the second shoulder, there. From here on the bearing is set to be an interference fit, so it has to move forward one centimeter, this distance here, to the third shoulder there or half an inch by mechanical means, that means a little bit of tapping as it's being driven forward. Interference fit means that the diameter here on the inner ring is slightly smaller than the diameter from the second shoulder here to the third shoulder there. So on this length of the shaft the inside ring on the bearing will expand a little bit as it's being squeezed onto the shaft here. So that's what's meant by interference fit. This is an inner ring interference fit. The same shaft detail is on the opposite end of the motor shaft as well. Three shoulders. First one, second one, and third one. Here the second shoulder we're talking a tenth. A tenth mean, means a tenth of a thousand of an inch or a ten thousandth of an inch or something like that. All right. That means that the bearing is really really loose here until the first shoulder, less loose after that and gets stuck here at the second shoulder as well and from here on it's interference fit so it needs to be driven forward because the inner ring is smaller than the shaft diameter there. So this ring or uh, this bearing will go forward all the way here. So that means that for removal you only have whatever air gap you see now between the bearing here and these commutator segments here are made of copper, a very soft metal. In the removal process, especially the removal process, you don't want to hurt damage, chip, dent, whatever, deform these commutator segments in any which way. So when this one is fully in place, the gap between the two of them is only about this much. Okay, you can see this gap here between the two. So how this was removed, very simply, with one of these forks. Now, I'm going to show you. They both fit over the thin part of the or the smaller diameter part of the shaft but then this one does not fit over the thicker part here so it's not really a good removal tool because it doesn't go forward enough. So this tool does. Of course 
it cannot be inserted all the way when the bearing is in place so only the tip of it was placed in here between the commutator segments and the bearing you know just envision the bearing being in place and I'm gonna try to hold them together like so at the shoulder there so only the tip of it fits there and the bearing was tapped down so in this position here on the very on this very same tapping block here this was just barely inserted there and was tapped down with this hammer here just tap 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 down now uh, at each at each tap this needs to be rotated the shaft needs to be rotated 180 degrees in essence this bearing cannot be driven forward this way okay it has to be moved forward evenly as much as possible because if you try to move it forward if you tap it only on one side here and it it's gonna get stuck it's you're gonna have to straighten it out and move it as evenly as possible on both sides opposite 180 degrees just pick two sides on it installation these are still mint in package will be straightforward we'll need a little bit of lubricant some kind of grease that I have uh, somewhere here so from the second shoulder to the third shoulder this needs to be lubricated just a little bit and for installation because this is an inner ring interference and the new bearings will have their rubber seals in place you need a tool you need a something a piece of a pipe something that fits over the motor shaft so it does not get stuck anywhere first shoulder second shoulder all the way to the third one and doesn't get stuck under any circumstances both ends of the shaft and it needs to be also only as big as the inner ring so that the inner ring is forced forward when you tap on this sleeve okay this can be a piece of pipe that fits exactly to the diameter of this bearing so you don't want to grab a tool that's too wide and like this I'm just gonna try to explain it because that would dent or deform the seal here and that's that's not a happy situation also you don't want a tool that's too big because this is an inner ring interference fit needs to be driven not by the outside ring needs to be driven by the inside ring forward so this is gonna be my tapping tool of course it's too short but only the first part of this pipe or sleeve or whatever you can find needs to fit precisely the second can be just just any kind of pipe whatever just hollow inside anything that fits so I'm gonna tap on this end here and that will drive this forward a centimeter on this lubricated shoulder there so I hope that makes sense that's about uh, taking I don't know three to five minutes to remove one bearing so that's 10 minutes for bearing removal and two minutes for installation each is not taking a whole lot of time but it might take a little bit of time for you to find these bits that will this one especially is critical that will help with the installation one last item that can help with the installation if you can find an inner ring of a bearing a bigger bearing so then the one you're trying to install this is not gonna work because this inner ring is smaller so it doesn't even fit on the shaft on the skinnier part of the skinniest part of the shaft but using an inner ring to drive the inner ring is also ideal if the inner ring that's driving your bearing forward is as big or just a little bit bigger than the inner ring you're trying to install then inner ring also works as an installation tool and then the inner ring can be driven by whatever a larger size of anything crude whatever so that's how removal and installation is done now if you excuse me I'm gonna take 
five minutes to install my new bearings. 